Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. In the aftermath of the election and all of the things that didn't turn out the way a lot of people thought they would turn out, and now we are faced with a lot of problems and trials and difficulties. Now, what happened that it didn't go the way that a lot of people thought, and we ended up with a president that didn't look like he would ever be president? So help you, God? So help me, God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank president. You. Well, we need to ask the question, how many people were really seeking God, or were they seeking the good times that they had? And what happens when people get all the good times and everything's rolling well? Well, they forget God, and their hearts turn to what they are doing. So God gives a warning clear back here in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, about after he has blessed people and they don't respond to him, he tells what the problem is. And it's right here. Verse 10, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Isn't that what it is with us today? Don't we have a great land? We call it America, the greatest nation in the world, and we trust in God? Well, do we really trust in God? Or do we trust in ourselves? And those who turn to God, are they really turning to God the way that God wants? Or are they turning to God the way that they want? So these are the questions that we need to ask ourselves, and you need to ask yourself. So notice the warning. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Now we'll talk about that a little bit later. This also is where Jesus quoted from, that we are to live by every word of God. Now, how many people do you know are living by every word of God? And are you? Because church at home is for you, so that you can find God in the privacy of your own home. And that's a key important thing. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses. That's what we have, right? Lots of houses, big cities, large apartments, highways, cars, everything that we want right at our fingertip. Isn't that something? And then he also says, and when your herds and your flocks and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, now notice verse 14, because this applies to too many people. And we'll ask the question, how do you know what this really is? And how do you know if this applies to you. Verse 14, Then you become haughty of heart, and you forget the Lord your God, says here who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Well, how do people forget God? Number one, by not paying any attention to his commandments and his laws, and his word. Number two, by becoming so busy 
that they have no time for God. And when that happens, disasters begin to occur. And right now, America is facing some of the greatest potential disasters in its history in a long, long time. And that's because of this very thing right here. They have forgotten God, and they have become haughty of heart. Now, let's look at some other things to see how this is brought out. Let's come to Psalm 78. Because here's something that always happens. Remember, every time there's a disaster, every time something really goes wrong, people cry out to God, Oh, God, help us! And that doesn't last very long. And they try going to church, but unfortunately, the churches don't help that much either. Because the churches in America are failing. Because if they really understood God and understood the Word of God, oh, they have it, oh, they use it, but they don't live by it. Now, do you? We'll look at that in a little bit. But when disaster comes, which happens to people all the time, and they turn to God, wonder, oh, Lord, why is this? And they wait until they're on their sick bed. Oh, Lord, heal me. Oh, I've been in this accident. Oh, I've lost my job. All of the troubles or difficulties come upon you. Here's how it comes. Psalm 78 and verse 32. For all this they sinned and did not believe in his wonderful works. Now, what is sin? because that's the primary thing that cuts us off from God. The Bible tells us sin is the transgression of the law. And don't think for a minute that the New Testament has done away with the law of God, because Jesus said he didn't come to abolish the law or the prophets. So you need to rethink that if that's what you have been taught, because that leads you into sin. And you're going to be surprised how many people are living in sin and they think they're doing right. And so when disasters come, how do they respond? Oh, Verse 33, therefore he ended their days in vanity and their years in terror when he slew them, when troubles and difficulties come. Now look at it right now. We are in the midst of a terrible pandemic. It has killed over 400,000 people. Now, some people are wondering what's happening. Some people are saying, even news commentators, we need to read the Bible. Well, if you don't know what you're reading and you don't understand what it is that is there, reading the Bible isn't going to get you very far. It may be of some help. And that's why we have church at home and why we have all of the material that we have so you can learn about God. What is the true God? Where is the true God? How do I find him? Why am I suffering? Why am I going through all these things? Now notice verse 34. When he slew them, then they sought him. They turned back and sought after God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock and the Most High was their Redeemer. All right? So they always start back to God. But starting back is not the finish. Notice the next verse. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouths, and they lied to him with their tongues, for their heart was not steadfast with him. Neither were they faithful in his covenant. 
Now that's quite a thing to contemplate, isn't it? Look at how many people, supposedly, have been praying that the election would go the way that they wanted, but it didn't happen. And it didn't happen because of sin. And it didn't happen because that sin was a continuous, ongoing sin that they have been doing, yet thinking that they were doing right. Thinking that they were really seeking God. Well, we'll see in a little bit. There's something else that has to go along with it, too. Now then, let's ask the question, if you're seeking God His way, now we'll explain that as we go along, because you can't come to God and have Him bless you while you're still living in sin. So let's look at some of the things that you need to examine yourself and look at yourself to do. And the place to begin is with the Ten Commandments. So let's go to Exodus 20. That's where the Ten Commandments were spoken by God directly to the children of Israel. And remember the one who spoke the Ten Commandments was the one who became Jesus Christ of the New Testament. Now, a lot of people don't know that. So let's ask some questions as we look at this and examine yourself and ask yourself, am I transgressing or breaking this commandment? Let's read it here. Exodus 20 and verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, spoken personally, to all the children of Israel down below at the base of Mount Sinai, and God was on top, and it was a great thing going on. Fire and smoke and like a storm and wind and a voice of God thundering. First time that that many people heard the voice of God at one time. And he says, I am the Lord your God. Now, is the Lord your God your God? Notice what he says. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage? So God is the one who rescues you from your trouble. And if God rescues you from your trouble, then the rest of the commandment really, really applies. Verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Oh, well, I worship the true God. We have the Bible. Yes, you have the Bible. But we will see you're not worshiping the true God. And the majority of Christendom in the world today does not worship the true God in the way that he said. I want you to think about it. Let me ask you a question. Do you have other things that are your gods? People, entertainment, sports, possessions, power, prestige, office? What is it that's most important in your life? If you're not doing it God's way, that can become your God. So ask yourself the question, do I have any other gods before me? Next one, the second commandment. Let's look at that, because this is one that nearly all established Christendom does. And I want you to really think about this in relationship if you go to a church on Sunday and they have 
crosses and crucifixes and things like this. Now notice what he commands. This is quite a long commandment, so let's read it. You shall not make for yourselves any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Now think about all the religions of the world with all the idols that they have. And they've got them with all kinds of animals and people and saints and so forth. Verse 5, You shall not bow yourself down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of those that hate me. Now, what does this tell you? If you have idols, do you have a cross, a crucifix? Do you have rosaries? Do you have pictures of Jesus? Those are all sin. And the fact that you have them, you're responsible for that sin. So if you want to get right with God, and if you want God to bless you, your repentance is going to require that you get rid of all of them. Oh, but they say we're not worshiping them, but we're venerating them. Well, veneration is worship. And furthermore, what was the first part of the command? You shall not make. So, they shouldn't even be there in the first place. Let's go on. But showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Now, I want you to look at the last phrase there. Those who love me and keep my commandments. Do you love God? Now, we're going to see that's very important. Everyone likes to claim the love of God. You go on to religious channels and they all talk about the love of God and God's love is unconditional. No, it's not. It is conditional. God's love is everlasting. But those who live in sin do not receive the love of God. Now you think on that for a minute. Those who love me and keep my commandments, that's New Testament doctrine. Make a note of it. Go to John 14 and read what Jesus said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hmm? Do you? You believe in Jesus? If you believe in him, you'll believe in his words. And if you believe his words, you will do his words, won't you? Otherwise, you have another God before you, your own opinion. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That is, if they are doing what God said not to do, and they say, God gives us permission to do it. That's taking his name in vain. So the ones who take the name of God in vain more than any other people on the face of the earth are so-called Christian ministers who preach doctrines thinking that they come from the Bible and they don't and say, God says, when God never said. Bring those envelopes, please. Timothy, come hold the envelopes, please. Now, you that already gave, you may have to give again. Take the envelopes from him. So, come on. Lord, multiplication. The seed they sowed, they're going to be blessed beyond measure. In Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, now put it on the platform, please. Now, uh, give me the, the empty envelopes. All the empty envelopes. Lord, I declare property. 
Lord, I declare property. Lord, I declare property. I declare debt-free homes in the name of Jesus. Debt-free condos, debt-free apartments. Someone will walk up to these people and give them a, a check. They're going to get something back from the government. Some miracle will happen with a business. They'll get the money to pay off their house, pay off their condo, their apartment, and even get a new one. In Jesus' name. Properties will come their way in your holy name. And God's people said, Amen. Now listen to me and let the Lord lead you please on the instrument. I want you to come up and I want you to, to, to give something with 120 in it. You say, why 120? It's not a gimmick. 120 is the number in the Bible for a new season. Every time there's a new season. 120, no way is in the ark. 120 trumpets. Every time they blew the trumpets, a new season came to Israel. 120 in the upper room. When they came out of the upper room, a new season on the earth. So some of you need to give $1,200. You say, why? Well, because if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't work. In Jesus' name, Lord, property will come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? Now let's look at the fourth one. Because this is the big one. This is the big test. And you've heard us talk about it here on Church at Home. Why is this the big test? Because you must do it or you have no connection with God. Do you understand that? Well, let's see if you can. Fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And every Christian minister so-called knows that in the Bible, the Bible only teaches the Sabbath day which is the seventh day of the week called Saturday today. So lying and deceptive is the religion of Catholicism in Europe that they have moved Sunday to appear to be the seventh day of the week to keep people in deception and not realizing that they are breaking the fourth commandment. So the question then comes down to each one of us. Do we remember the Sabbath? Or do we do as everybody else does, forget the Sabbath? I got to shop. I got to take care of my car. I've got to do, do my yard. I've got to clean the house. We've got to go on a camping trip. We have a vacation to go upon. We don't have time. Saturday is the day that all of these things are, are done, and I couldn't possibly do it. Guess what? That's an idol. What happens? Let's read it here. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your livestock, nor the stranger within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. Now, Nowhere concerning the seventh-day weekly Sabbath did God ever change it. Now, let's look at another scripture if you say, well, that's not what my preacher says. Well, pray tell. If your preacher is not teaching you the truth, it doesn't matter what he tells you if it's contrary to the Word of God. Jesus didn't come to change the law. Now let's read what Jesus said concerning the Sabbath. His own words. 
First person speaking out of his own mouth. Mark 2 and verse 27. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man. And that was the first thing that God made for man to connect man and God together. Genesis, the second chapter. And by the way, the Sabbath is God's Sabbath, not a Jewish Sabbath. The Jews don't own it. Now, some of them may keep it. But then, if you keep it and you don't believe in Christ, then you also have another idol, your own version of Sabbath keeping. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. In other words, man has no jurisdiction over the Sabbath, what to do on the Sabbath, what not to do on the Sabbath, and coming to worship God on the Sabbath day. Man has no say-so about that day because God created it, and man cannot change it. So you look at what's happening in America and all the difficulties and all the problems that are going on, and you look at your own life and all the problems that are going on and ask the question, do I keep the commandments of God as God has said? And if you don't keep the seventh day Sabbath, you do not keep the commandments of God. Here's the key. Verse 28, therefore, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. He is the Lord. You need our booklet. Which day is the Lord's day? The seventh day. That's it. Now that you know this, what are you going to do about it? Are you still going to go your way? Are you still going to believe the lies that come from the pulpit? Well, my preacher's a nice man. He wouldn't lie. Really? Then you walk up to him and say, what day does the Bible give as a the day to worship God on, Saturday or Sunday? He won't tell you. The Bible says Saturday, but the church changed it. Sleight of hand. Here's a great principle to understand. What God has commanded, no man can undo. Because God gave it. Does any man have greater authority than God? The Pope has no authority the way that they lie in the Catholic Church. So you think on that. You think on the days we're living in, and you look at the difficulties that we are facing, and look at all the things that are happening, and you need to ask yourself the question, how can I get right with God? First of all, get the booklet on the Sabbath day. Then get the one, Lord, what should I do? Because that book will tell you all about repentance and coming to God and understanding that, yes, God will hear you. Yes, God will forgive you. But you have to come to him. And then you have to keep the commandments of God. And you must keep the Sabbath day. And if more people would seek God in the way that he wants you to, then we would have less trouble. Then there would be blessing. Then we would understand more of God's way. So now we have all of this set before us in our lives. So what are we going to do? And what will you do? Will you do the will of God or continue living in sin? So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone.